A hero by any standard. Outer edge danger zone, lesson 11. The call came on Saturday morning. It was from St. Mary's Hospital in Gulu, Uganda. Dr. Matthew L. picked up the phone. He listened carefully. There seemed to be a strange disease killing our student nurses, said a doctor on the other end of the line. The doctor asked L. to come quickly. L., or Dr. Matthew as he was called, was the head of St. Mary's Hospital. On October 7, 2000, he was in the city of Kampala. He was taking some classes there. But when he got this message, he did not hesitate. Leaving his wife and five children in Kampala, he rushed back to Gulu. He didn't know what was wrong at St. Mary's, but he planned to find out. When Dr. Matthew arrived, he learned how grim the situation was. In the past few weeks, 17 people had died hideous deaths. First, they had come down with high fevers. Then, they began vomiting and coughing up blood. They developed nosebleeds. They even were bleeding from their eyes and ears. Nothing seemed to help them, and after a few days, each one died. Two of the victims had been student nurses, and now a third nurse was dying the same way. Dr. Matthew had been sifting through papers put out by World Health Organization and the Center for Disease Control. He stayed up all night to read them. As he read, a chill must have gone down his spine. He now knew what he was facing. The deaths were caused by the dreaded Ebola virus. No one knows exactly where Ebola came from. It first appeared in the 1970s in certain parts of Africa. Like any other virus, it can grow in number and cause disease once it enters a living cell. The Ebola virus passes easily from person to person. A drop of blood, a bit of sweat, a teardrop, even a cough can pass Ebola from one victim to the next. Because of this, no one who works with Ebola victims is safe. Dr. Matthew knew that. He would not let people down when they needed him the most. Dr. Matthew and his head nurse, Sister Maria De Santo, went to work. They moved Ebola victims away from other patients. They ordered anyone caring for Ebola victims to wear protective clothing. Protective clothes, they hoped, would lessen the chances that the staff would catch the virus. Clothing included gloves, gowns, masks, caps, goggles. The goggles made it hard for the staff to do their job. The lenses regularly fogged up. So there were times when doctors had to take the goggles off. It was the only way they could see to read charts and take blood samples. As more and more victims arrived to the hospital, fear grew. Panic threatened to crush the staff's courage. Dr. Matthew rallied them. He told us to stay strong, to struggle, to fight as a team. Said Dr. Yadi Zabulin, people were scared, but he had always been a good leader, and so people lined up to fight with him. For weeks, Dr. Matthew and his staff did their best to care for the victims, and they tried hard to keep the disease from spreading. Each day, Dr. Matthew was at the hospital by 7 a.m. He didn't go home till 8 p.m. It was exhausting work. When his wife and children called to wish him a happy birthday in early November, he barely had the energy to talk to them. By late November, it seemed the worst was over. The number of new cases began to drop. But sadly, 12 nurses were among the dead, and more were still fighting for their lives. At 5 a.m. on November 20, a nurse dying from Ebola went crazy. He jumped out of bed, started to run around. As he moved, he began coughing up blood. The staff could not quiet him, so they called Dr. Matthew. Dr. Matthew threw on his protective clothes. He did not put on his goggles. Perhaps he was too sleepy. Perhaps he was in too much of a hurry. It may even be he didn't think he could see well enough with them on. In any case, he was not wearing goggles as he helped get the nurse back to bed. An hour later, the nurse was dead. A few days after that, Dr. Matthew began showing signs of illness. At first, he hoped it was the flu. Then he hoped it was malaria, another disease that brings fever. At last, he had to admit the truth. He had Ebola. The next six days were awful. The staff could not believe their beloved leader was dying. Dr. Matthew's wife could not believe it either. But it was true. Early in the morning of December 5, Dr. Matthew became the 156th Ugandan to die, over, die of Ebola. Over the next few weeks, 17 more died but 250 victims got better. The death rate in this Ebola outbreak was much better than in others. Best of all, by early 2001, the outbreak was over. Ebola might have killed thousands. It might have destroyed the whole city of Gulu. Thanks to Dr. Matthew, that had not happened. He had moved quickly and bravely to control the disease. It cost him his life, but that was a price he had been willing to pay. 
As one fellow doctor put it, Matthew L. was a hero by any standard we care to use.